So your motorcycle won't start. And you're thinking to yourself, where do I start to figure out what the problem is? The good news for you is that there are only four things that a motorcycle needs in order to run. Those things are fuel, spark, air, and compression. However, most videos on this topic tend to forget the key fifth element to this equation, and that is you. More specifically, what did you do? Were you recently working on your bike? Did you just put on a new coil? Did you just change the charging system? Did you just mess with your ignition? Because most times when a motorcycle won't start, it is your fault. And listen, I'm not trying to say it's your fault and I've never done this. I have caused many a problem on this bike right here. And I'm here to tell you, before we even get into the fuel spark, air, and compression that we're gonna talk about today, ask yourself that question. What is the last thing you touched on the bike? Because there's a good chance that it is one of these four, but you could dial that down a lot quicker by asking yourself what you touched most recently. So, putting that to the side, when my bike won't start, the place that I always start and the place I recommend you start, what do you think it's gonna be? If you said carburetor, you are wrong. Don't you dare touch that carburetor first because 90% of the time, the problem that leaves people on the side of the road is their electrical system. There's nothing sexy about talking about the electrical system. Everybody wants to dive into that carburetor, but you must resist that urge. Start always with the battery. So what we're gonna do today, I'm gonna pop this seat off right here and I will bring you guys in close up on the battery and I'll show you how we test it. So we've got the seat off. We're looking at the battery from the top down. The first thing I want you to check if your bike isn't starting is your battery voltage. We've got our voltmeter right here and it's set to DC volts 20. I actually have a whole video that I'll put a link up here in the top right corner showing you how to use a voltmeter to test all your electrical system on your bike. Uh, that's a little bit of a deeper dive. Today I'm just showing you the basics. So red goes to red, black goes to black, and you can see we are getting about 13 volts on our battery. What you want to see is 12 or more. Then you can fire the motorcycle up and you can test the battery while the bike is running and we'll do that now. So we've done the tests that we can do on our battery. With the bike off, we were seeing about 13 volts and with the bike running, we were getting about 14 and a half volts. Both of those readings are satisfactory. That's where I wanna see my battery. But what you can't see on your battery here in your own garage, unless you have a more specific tool, is the load test reading. So you can take this battery to an AutoZone, uh, Advanced Auto Parts, O'Reilly's, anywhere, whatever your local parts store is, and they will load test your battery. I cannot express to you how important it is that you go and do this if you're having a problem that you can't solve on your bike. Because trust me, everybody, everybody has a good battery. Everybody has a good battery. It's not the battery. I'm sure of it. I know, no, it's gotta be something else. And then two months later, after chasing their tail, they go, oh yeah, the battery was bad. Or they don't tell you about it at all because they're so embarrassed that they knew that the battery was bad. So please, if you are going to proceed with the rest of the steps we're gonna talk about today and you don't find a problem, take your battery to get load tested. It costs you nothing. These places will do it for free and it is the only way to find out if your battery is truly functioning properly. But let's put that to the side and let's say your battery is good, test positive on the load test, let's move on to the next step. Once you know that the battery is not the problem, the next thing you wanna check is your fuses. Now on my bike, I've got this fuse block here that has one, two, three fuses on it. Headlight, ignition, and tail light. So what you can do to check these is you can pull them out and actually look at the fuse you can see there's a tiny little V in the middle of that fuse, and that is the connector from one side of the fuse to the other. So you get shine in there. So if that's broken, you know right away that fuse is bad. But let's say you don't wanna rely just on your eyes and you wanna know for sure, is there voltage going across that? The way you can check that is using that same multimeter in that same setting that we had it on, DC20, you can take your ground or your black end put it on the battery ground, we'll put the multimeter right here, and then you'll take your red 
and you'll touch the far end of that terminal. And you should probably turn your key on for this. Touch the far end of that terminal, and what you'll see, you got 11.75. So you're getting battery voltage on that one, on this one, and then we'll test the last one here. If I can touch it properly, there we go. So we're getting battery voltage through all three of these fuses. So we know our fuses are good. So with the battery and the fuses confirmed as good, we are now ready to test for spark. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna remove this rear spark plug, and then we're gonna ground the side of the spark plug against this cylinder fin right here. So if you have spark in your electrical system, is, or your, excuse me, in your coil is firing properly, you'll see a little flash right here. If it's not, then you know something is up with your coil because your battery's fine, your fuses are fine, the coil would be the problem here. Now, if you have an electric starter, you would do this same test. You would rest this right here. It's just that you would be able to push a button and check a lot easier than in my situation where I have to go to the other side of the bike and kick it. But hopefully we can show you guys what this looks like. Now that we know that we have spark, that's one of our four elements satisfied. Now, since we've got the spark plug already out, this is a perfect time to test for compression. The way we test for compression is with this guy right here. This is a Harbor Freight compression test kit. Figured I'd give you just a quick top-down view, and I'll show you here. This hose pops right into this gauge. So this is just your normal slide up on this collar pop that in there like this. I'll leave a link to this whole kit in the description, by the way, so you can pick it up. And if you don't have a Harbor Freight near you, I'll leave a link to a similar one that you can get on Amazon so that everybody's got an option. And like I said, this piece right here is gonna thread right into our spark plug hole. So we'll go ahead and get that hooked up now. So if you've never done a compression test on a bike, here's the way it works. This is your gauge right here. On my bike, which is kickstart only, I'm actually going to have to kick the bike repeatedly until this gauge stops increasing in pressure. What we're looking for is roughly, you can see actually it's written in green there. You wanna see at least 100 PSI, if not more. The other thing is you want both cylinders to be about the same, at least within 20 of each other. One other thing to mention is while you're doing this test, you wanna keep the throttle held wide open so that you're getting as much possible air into the bike as you can. And if you have an electric starter instead of a kicker, this process is gonna be the same. You'll hold the throttle wide open and you'll hit the starter button and you will just let the motor crank and crank and crank until this gauge cannot go any higher. I'm gonna keep my gauge here where I can see it. I'm gonna leave the ignition off because I don't want the bike to actually, this, this bike is running. We don't want this bike to start up uh, while we're doing this test. So I'm gonna leave the key off. I'm gonna hold the throttle at wide open and we are just gonna start kicking until this gauge stops rising. All right, so that is where the gauge is staying and we are at 120 PSI on this cylinder. Now you'll go ahead and repeat this test for your front cylinder as well. Like I said, here we're plugged into the rear. Just wanna bring you guys in a little closer so you can see. We're at 120 PSI on this bike, which puts us in the green. This is where we wanna be. Remember, I know there's a, lot of, there's a lot of dial up here, but Harleys are low compression motors unless you've done something to the motor to make it a higher compression. So don't feel like because you have 120, that's gotta be in some way bad. 120 is a good number. You should be happy with that reading. If you see that reading 90 or below, that means you're getting into some, some bad territory and they might have an issue with the cylinder itself. Now I know you guys are thinking, Grease, if you don't talk about carburetors right now, I'm gonna click off this video and I get it. And it is time to move on to the third component, which is fuel. We're gonna start talking about it right now. The first thing coming from our gas tank is this little guy right here, your fuel filter. Before you actually yank that carburetor off the bike, Give this guy a good cleaning. It's very easy to get a giant bug, a leaf, whatever fell in through your gas cap, plug in this filter up, restricting the flow to your carb, and that's what's causing your bike not to start. So clean this thing out if you have one. If you don't, 
we can move right to the other side of the bike. I know, I know, we're getting to the carburetor. All right, guys, the main event. We're finally over here at everyone's favorite spot to troubleshoot, the carburetor. Now, this is an SNS Super E carburetor that I've got on my bike. And if you are not familiar with this type of car, but you're running one of these guys, I will put a link right up there in the top right corner. I have a full beginner's guide that will show you where the jets are, everything you need to know, how to reset it to factory settings. And I highly recommend you watch that video if you're planning on diving into an SNS Super E. However, let's talk about the general concepts of what we would do next if our bike is not running. First, this is our fuel line heading into the carburetor on mine. It's on this little swivel. Yours might not have a swivel, depending on what year it was made. It's got a hose clamp right here. The first thing I would do is I would take this hose clamp off and I would pop this line off of this little barb down here. The reason we do that is because you wanna make sure that even though your fuel filter on the other side of the bike is clean, you might have a blockage somewhere in this line. And if you pop this thing off, and gas isn't pouring out of it, then you know you need to take that fuel line off and you need to troubleshoot that issue. So, you guys don't need me to pull that off to show you what gas pouring out looks like, but that's the first thing you wanna check. If that's not the cause, the next thing you would do, and again, check out that video I linked up above, you would pop off your float bowl and take a look at your pilot jet and your main jet. Clean both of those jets out, if those jets are now clean, you can go ahead, put your float bowl back on. If, you, if this is a brand new carburetor on your bike, I would highly recommend you follow the guides in that video. Reset your carb to factory settings. So let's assume you've cleaned out your carburetor, you cleaned your main jet, you cleaned your pilot jet, you reassembled the carb and put the float bowl back on and the bike still won't start. That means it's time to move on to our fourth element, which is air. Sometimes your bike just isn't getting enough air for the motorcycle to run properly. Now on my bike, you can see I've got this velocity stack, which is how you can tell that I'm not a very smart man because SNS themselves will tell you never run a velocity stack on a street motorcycle. But I love their carburetors. I don't have to listen to everything that they say. I love the way the velocity stack looks and if it performs a little worse, so be it. I'm never gonna have to worry about whether my bike is getting air because the only thing in between the carburetor and the atmosphere is a small mesh screen. However, your bike might have an air cleaner with a filter element on it. Over time, those filter elements get gummed up and they flow air a little less freely. So if you've not changed that filter element or cleaned it, if you have a washable filter element, the fourth circuit, our air circuit, could be your problem. Take your air cleaner off, replace or clean out your filter element and make sure that it's actually breathing properly. Another way you could do that test is take the filter element and the air cleaner completely off and try to start the motorcycle. Because if your filter element is so dirty that your bike can't physically get enough air through it, that could be the reason your bike isn't starting. So today we did a crash course on the four elements a motorcycle needs to run, fuel, spark, air, and compression. If you need a deeper dive on the electrical side of things, click here for this video where I've got a full breakdown of how to test all your electrical systems. If you need a deeper dive on the Super E carburetor, click on this video right here where I will give you the full tutorial on how to disassemble and check your carburetor, reset it to factory settings. Thanks for watching Grease's Garage, guys. I'll catch you next week.